Hello there. Mr. Warrior here. That would be Mr. Warrior using my regular voice. Welcome to another math video. Oh, it's so wonderful to have you guys to come along. Look at this. We're doing another Go Math video. Ooh, algebra. Lesson 6, 11. I guess I would call that. And it's the use of properties of addition. So I always like to look at the topic because the topic gives us the bigger picture. And of course, I like to have fun with my magic pen and make the circle. Wee! Okay, it's not going to work. Wee again. So I tried. Yes! He shoots! He scores! That's right. So, let's get serious now, Mr. Wara. We're looking at the problem and it says, how can properties help you add fractions with unlike denominators? That's what I would like to know. Yes. I would like to know that. Please continue. I shall. It says connect. You can use properties of addition to help you add fractions with unlike denominators. Really? Show me how. Well, first let's go over the properties. First we have the commutative property, which basically states that the order of the terms doesn't change the outcome of the answer. For example, one half plus three fifths is equal to 3 plus 4 one half. Okay, does it matter the order? You could reverse them. I like to do my little arrows that rarely come out very nice. Or um, you could just do the loop de loop. Hey, it all works. The order does not change the outcome. Also, we have the associative property. This kind of thing associate is like who you kind of associate with. How are you going to group them? Here it says the 2 ninths plus 1 eighth plus 3 eighths is the same as, even if you group up the 1 eighth and the 3 eighths together over the here, and you leave the 2 ninths. So here you just do the reverse. I could get maybe my eraser. I've made such a mess here. Please clean it up. There we go. Clean, all oh, clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, coming back down again, get a different color. So here, you can see how these are grouped together, but then this time, these two are grouped together. It's almost like the opposite. All right, so anyways, parentheses tell which operation to do first because we learned PEMDAS and that's the very first one, P. Okay, mm, my mind's blank. I just might have to go to the next page and tell something. Whoa, what's going on here? Hey, buddy, what are you coming in here? You got no business on my page, yeah? Oh, really? You're going to eat me? Yeah, right, Mr. Alligator. Come on, what is this? You took up the whole screen? All right. All right, moving on to the actual problem. Um, it says Jane and her family are driving to Big Lagoon State Park. On the first day, they travel one third, okay, one third of the total distance. All right, so if they're driving, think of this as the total. Somewhere around here, they drove one third on the first day. And then on the second day, they travel one third of the total distance in the morning. So again, now we're talking a, another one-third, but then also one-sixth in the afternoon. It's all based on that total, wherever that total is. So we have one-third, one-sixth. It's like we're adding all these numbers together, as you can see. Now down below it says, use the associative property uh, to, to solve here. Okay, so day one plus day two. I get it. One-third represents the first day. And then the one-third plus, because on the second day, they traveled one third of the distance, total distance in the morning and one sixth of the total distance in the afternoon. So that way we group them together. Now, it says write the number sentence to represent the problem. Okay, use the associative property to group fractions with like denominators together. So in this case, I can see that the one third and one third, they had the same denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, one third plus one third plus one sixth. So I'm gonna leave the sixth on the outside. So I've used the associative property to group them differently based on the same denominator. Now I see I only have two squares. So I can go ahead and do what's in parentheses first and one third plus one third is two thirds and then I'm gonna add on my one sixth. Now that I have two thirds and one sixth, I just need to find that common denominator. Well three will go into six. So six seems like a great denominator. This guy's not going to change because it's the same. He already has a denominator of 6. However, he does not. But in order to get that 6, I'd have to multiply that by 2. So since I multiply that by 2, I'll multiply the top by 2. Now I have 4 6. 4 6 is the same as 2 thirds. And you could always, always, always 
pull out that old area model, right? Show your two thirds right there. And then say, if I were to divide that and put that into six, I would have to divide that in half. Divide them by half, you see I have one, two, three, four out of six. And then my answer becomes five over six, which basically says use mental math to add the fractions with like denominators, we did that. Write equivalent fractions, and then of course we added. So Jane's family has driven five sixths of the total distance by the end of the day. Next page. Now we have the use, oh my goodness, example. We've got a big problem here. Okay, let's take a look. So here it says add. Okay, we have two and five eighths plus one and two thirds plus one and one eighth. And we have these terms grouped. It says use the commutative property and the associative property. It even tells you here, use the commutative property to put fractions with like denominators next to each other. Okay, so if I'm just going to have to start off, first of all, put them next to each other. I see. So in this case, then I'd want to put one and two thirds plus two and five eighths plus one and one eighth. So therefore, I've used a commutative property because I've changed the order, as you can see here. Now, I can go ahead and do my one and two thirds here. And then I have my two and five eighths plus one and one eighth. And now they've been grouped together. Now over here I have one and two thirds. And it says here to use mental math to add the fraction with like denominator. So here we can say three and six eighths. There's your mental math. And now we come down, you can see that we need to find, uh, get an equivalent fraction. Now here, three and eight, I'm looking at that one, Thing we learned from an earlier lesson was to multiply the denominators and that would work for me in this case which would be 24 and kind of sloppy the 4 there but that is a 4 and so here 3 times 8 is 24 so therefore I'd have to multiply the 8 to the 2 which would give me 16 24 and then over here I'm having the opposite times 3 times 3 is 18 and again I still have that 3 in the front now I've got myself a pretty big uh, number here. I'm going to do some regrouping here. So here I have, it's saying to equal this and that. So they're, I, I think going across, what they want us to do is do the four. We've added those two together. But now I also have 16 and 18, which if you add those, I guess that would be 34 over 24. And four and 34 over 24. Double check my work. I think that's correct. And so now I have another hole in there that I need to take out. Keep in mind, a hole here just means 24 over 24 is equal to one. And as you can see, we have more than 24 on the top, so it's like we have extra. We have 10 extra to be exact. So that's going to give us one more to give me five. And I know that maybe some of you maybe got confused on that, but we have an overlapping here, more than one hole. So I took that one hole and I took him out, leaving me with just 10 24s, okay? And it says rename and simplify. Okay, now what do we have coming up here? Uh, looks like, try this, use properties to solve. Okay, well, let's do that. Well, we have A and B. First thing I'm looking at this here, I mean, we could change the order of these here. These seem like they're already next to each other. So I suppose, I suppose we could do uh, five and one quarter uh, plus three quarters this would be associated property plus one and five twelfths. I don't know if I'll use both of them. It says I have to name a property I used that was clearly the associative property. Now if I could do some mental math here, I could just take five. Oh, look at that. That's gonna make a whole. So that's just gonna be six plus one and five twelfths. So that's gonna be seven and five twelfths. That was simple enough. Here, looks like we might want to do the commutative property first so we can get these next to each other. So I'll go ahead and I mean we could actually do that or you know what? This is a commutative property plus and then we'll put the one fifth. I guess we could do the associative property at the same time, right? So we've brought those two together, but we've also switched the terms. Now we can do the mental math, three tenths plus, that looks like three over five. We need to find the equivalent fraction. This five goes right into the 10, so the least common denominator would be 10. 
This here, of course, is just going to be 3. And then here we're going to multiply by 2. So we'll do the same on the top. Then we get 9 over 10. Okay. And so now that, I think, concludes this video. Probably went through those last problems quickly. Anyway, like always, my friends, live long and prosper.